This is the story of Donna Noble, a tale of temping, prophecy, biological metacrises, and mine. All in 90 seconds. <gasps> On her wedding day, Donna accidentally gate crashes the TARDIS. What? Although double crossing fiance Lance is eaten by giant alien spiders, you could still say it was the happiest day of her life. She meets the doctor, saves the day, but turns him down. <gasps> Regretting her decision and now living at home with a nagging mum and a stargazing granddad, it was only a matter of time before our heroes were reunited. Only this time, Donna was packed and ready to go. Oh, the hats. And don't they make oh, no, a lovely no, no, we're couple? Not, we're, not married. Married. we're not a we're couple. Not married. We're so not married. No. Never ever. Donna brings bravery, one-liners, oh, quick thinking, sensitivity. Don't get all chippy with me, Vera Duckworth. <laughs> sensitivity. Just say someone. Art appreciation. There really should be one of those in the Tate. And an inquisitive mind. Tell me there's no nodding. Ood, adiposed, and a couple of days later, Donna faces her biggest dilemma. In a parallel world, can she tell her left from her right? There is something on your back. Thanks, Lucius. Time Beetle rucksack not available in the shops. Successfully turning left, Donna saves the Doctor, saves London, and opens the gateway for the oh, bad wolf. The end of the universe. The Doctor gets exterminated and pours his regenerative powers into his old hand. Donna touches the hand, creating a new Doctor. A new Donna, half Time Lord, half human. That makes her the most important woman in the universe. The Doctor Donna. The Doctor Donna. Thanks, Ood. And the Doctor Donna saves the universe. Let's go and it. There's never been a human Time Lord metacrisis before. Probably because it's such a mouthful. Thanks, Tom. As the Doctor Donna dies, Donna's returned home to Chiswick, completely unaware of her adventures. But she's safe, well, and ready for her next temping assignment. See ya. Leaving the doctor to face Christmas alone.